The Voyager mission is one of the most ambitious and successful space exploration projects in history. It was launched in 1977 to study the outer planets of our solar system, such as Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Along the way, it also discovered new moons, rings, volcanoes, and storms. It also carried a golden record with sounds and images of Earth as a message to any potential alien civilization. But the Voyager mission did not end there. It continued to explore the unknown regions of space beyond our solar system. It crossed the boundaries of our sun's influence and entered interstellar space, which is the region between the stars. It is still collecting valuable scientific information about this mysterious realm, and it is still testing the limits of human engineering and exploration. In this video, I will talk about how and why NASA engineers still communicate with Voyager spacecraft to date, when we expect this mission to end and how far they can go, and some of the best discoveries and observations they have made so far. If you are curious about these amazing machines and their journey through space, then stay tuned. The Voyager spacecrafts are equipped with three radio antennas that can transmit and receive signals from Earth. However, since they are moving away from us at high speeds, they need to constantly adjust their orientation to keep in contact. To do this, they use a special mode called Roll and Hold, which means they rotate around their axis every few months to point their main antenna towards Earth. They also use two smaller antennas to maintain communication during the rotation. The signals they send and receive are very weak and take a long time to travel. For example, it takes about 21 hours for a signal from Voyager 1 to reach Earth. But why do we need to keep communicating with them? And what kind of commands and data do we exchange with them? Well, it is important to keep communicating with them because they are still collecting valuable scientific information about the interstellar space, which is the region between the stars. They are also testing the limits of human engineering and exploration. We send them commands to control their instruments, adjust their power levels, and update their software. We receive data from them about their status, their environment, and their discoveries. For example, we recently updated the software on Voyager 2 to optimize its memory usage and extend its lifespan. But how do we communicate with them? How do we send and receive these signals? Well we use a network of giant radio dishes called the Deep Space Network, DSN, which is operated by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL. The DSN has three stations located in California, Spain, and Australia, which cover different regions of the sky, and it tracks the position of the Voyager spacecrafts and sends commands to them at specific times. It also receives data from them and processes it for analysis. These kinds of communications are not easy or simple. They require careful planning, coordination, and engineering. They also require patience and perseverance. But it is worth it because it allows us to learn more about our universe and ourselves. However, the Voyager mission has been going on for longer than anyone expected. It has survived many challenges and obstacles along the way but it will not last forever. There are two main factors that will determine the end of the mission, the power supply and the communication capability of the spacecraft. The power supply comes from three radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, that convert heat from radioactive decay into electricity. The power output decreases by about four watts per year. This means that eventually there will not be enough power to operate all the instruments on board. The engineers at JPL have been managing this problem by turning off some instruments or reducing their activity. They have also been optimizing the power usage by updating the software on the spacecraft. The current estimates are that both spacecrafts will have enough power to operate some of their instruments until around 2025. The communication capability depends on the strength of the radio signals and the availability of the ground stations that receive them. The signals from the spacecraft become weaker as they travel farther away from us. They also become more affected by noise and interference from other sources. So the ground stations have to use more sensitive receivers and larger antennas to detect them. They also have to compete with other missions and projects that need the DSN. 
The current estimates are that we will totally lose contact with the spacecrafts by around 2036. But until then, how far will they travel? How far have they traveled so far? Well, they have traveled farther than any other human-made objects in space. As of October 2023, Voyager 1 is about 23 billion kilometers, 14 billion miles, away from Earth, while Voyager 2 is about 19 billion kilometers, 12 billion miles, away from Earth. They are both in interstellar space, which means they have left the influence of our sun's magnetic field and solar wind. They are traveling at speeds of about 17 kilometers per second, 38,000 miles per hour. At this rate, they will reach the nearest star system, Alpha Centauri, in about 40,000 years. But they will not stop there. They will continue to travel through the galaxy, encountering other stars and planets along the way. They will also carry the golden record with them, which contains sounds and images of Earth as a message to any potential alien civilization. And who knows, maybe one day someone or something will find them and listen to their story. Both spacecrafts have made many amazing discoveries and observations in their journey through the solar system and beyond. Some of the most significant ones are, they discovered 23 new moons around the outer planets, such as Io, Europa, Titan, and Triton. These moons have diverse and complex features, such as volcanoes, geysers, lakes, and oceans. Some of them may even harbor life. They revealed the diversity and complexity of the planetary rings, such as the braided ring of Saturn, the shepherd moons of Uranus, and the clumpy ring of Neptune. These rings are made of dust, ice, and rocks that orbit around the planets. They are shaped by gravity, collisions, and magnetic fields. They witnessed the volcanic activity on Io, the icy geysers on Enceladus, and the methane lakes on Titan. These phenomena show that some of the moons have internal heat sources that drive their geology and chemistry. They also suggest that some of them have subsurface oceans that could support life. They also captured the first images of the dark side of Saturn, the great dark spot of Neptune, and the polar auroras of Jupiter and Uranus. These images show that the outer planets have dynamic weather systems that produce storms, winds, and lights. They showed us that they have powerful magnetic fields that interact with their environments. They measured the magnetic fields, the atmospheres, and the temperatures of the outer planets and their moons. These measurements show that the outer planets have different compositions and structures than the inner planets. They also show that some of their moons have thin atmospheres that vary with time and location. Then they cross the termination shock, the heliopause, and the bow shock, which are the boundaries of our solar system's interaction with the interstellar space. These boundaries mark the transition from the region where our sun's wind dominates to the region where the interstellar wind dominates. They also mark the transition from the region where our sun's magnetic field dominates to the region where the interstellar magnetic field dominates. They detected cosmic rays, plasma waves, and magnetic fields in the interstellar medium. These detections show that the interstellar space is not empty or uniform. It is filled with particles and energy that come from different sources, such as stars, supernovas, and black holes. It is also affected by shocks and turbulence that create waves and fluctuations. These are just some of the highlights of what the Voyager spacecraft have done so far. There are many more details and discoveries that you can find on NASA's website. In conclusion, the Voyager mission is a remarkable achievement of human curiosity, creativity, and perseverance. It has shown us wonders and mysteries that we never imagined before. It has also given us a sense of awe and wonder about our existence. As Carl Sagan, one of the founders of the Voyager mission said, the spacecraft will be encountered and the record played only if there are advanced spacefaring civilizations in interstellar space. But the launching of this bottle into the cosmic ocean says something very hopeful about life on this planet. Thank you for watching.